Hey guys, this is Greg from Orange Tree Samples. I wanted to show you how to use a new rhythm guitar engine for Evolution Electric Guitar, basically through a practical screencast style tutorial. Uh, that way you'll get an idea how to use it um, while actually creating a guitar track. So first of all, I have all my chords marked out already using markers. And I'll just scroll through that th so you can see. Um, and then I'll show you how to actually create that guitar track from the chords. Now, first thing I wanted to mention that I always start my songs on uh, the second measure. Um, it's basically just a habit, just in case I ever want to uh, have a pickup or anything like that. So, so let's go. And I already have the rhythm guitar loaded up. I've just got the basic strum engine, or sorry, preset loaded right now. Um, yeah, so... I'll start out with that and show you how it works. Basically, this blue region right there is the chord detection zone, and that's where you'll be holding the chord that you want to have the guitarist fret. And then in your other hand, you could use either your left or your right. These two um, strum palette sections of the keyboard are basically just mirrors of each other, and that way you don't have to use a button or selection to switch back and forth between left-handed and right-handed mode. I've just included basically duplicates on either side of the range. So um, let's close this and start. So first of all, what I used, what I like to do is just enter in the chords. So first of all, we have a, a B flat major chord. So, and and you can hear actually as I'm moving these notes around in the chord detection zone, you can hear the notes as the virtual guitarist is switching between those those uh, chords. Right now it's single notes, but you can hear him actually fretting the desired note, which is kind of a cool touch, and uh, it actually adds realism in the transitions between chords. So that's going to be uh, really useful later on. And then down here we actually have the, the strum palette keys. And these are just um, these are different strums. You can edit each one, change the speed, change the velocity to speed scaling, change which strings and how many strings are strummed and the articulation whether it's an upstroke or downstroke and much much more so basically the purpose of all these different presets that are included is that you can load them up you already have uh, predetermined strum keys and you already have the chord definitions all entered in for you already so it's pretty much ready to go the only thing is you might take um, take a moment just kind of going through the uh, the different strum keys to get an idea of what they do because that will vary patch to patch or you could just you know start out with the blank preset that I've included and uh, start from scratch but until then I really would recommend uh, starting out with the presets okay so B flat major so that will be you know B flat D F and um, technically I could just make it a B flat and D but I'm kind of a perfectionist so I usually spell things out as triads um, let me see. It can also be in any inversion you want. So that could be, you know, B flat D F, or it could start out, you know, on the D, or it could start on the F. Any of those inversions will be recognized as being the same exact chord type. So right now I have my triad right here, and that's the chord, and then I've got my strumming key. Now when no chord is selected, the strum key will actually just play muted notes because guitarists tend to mute the chord um, or actually when there's no chord playing they're gonna mute the open strings so let's hear what this sounds like so we have just a basic B flat chord and now we can uh, start programming our strum pattern so it sounds like this is downstroke and upstroke or yeah that's what it said that's what it looks like and in fact, we can actually go in and check. So here's the C, it's a downstroke, and here's an upstroke. You can see it starts on the very highest string and goes down. So, and then it looks like these other ones have are using different articulations. So this one is palm muted, but we don't need to worry about that right now. So I'm gonna write in my uh, pattern here. Let's make sure that snap is on, um, how about 16 notes? And generally, um, all the upbeats 
are upstrokes and all the downbeats are downstrokes. Um, strumming on guitar is actually quite simple until you get into more complicated um, triplet strums and stuff like that. Um, but basically your hand is just going up and down whether or not you're strumming or not. So it's pretty constant. And now we can vary the velocity to um, give a little more life to that pattern. So let's try this out. See how easy that is? So um, basically, we can just take that and um, copy it, duplicate that there, and then we can enter in the rest of those chords. So now here's an A-flat chord. So it'll be A-flat, C, E-flat. And what I like to do is, because on guitar you can't instantaneously go from chord to chord, so I like leaving a tiny little gap between those chords and that way, if we play it, you'll actually hear the guitarist switch chords. You know, we could actually go in and adjust that time, just make it really, really small gap there. And then it goes to an E flat. So it'll be E flat, G, B flat. We can just copy that same pattern, you know, or we could eventually vary it, but I'm trying to keep it short due to time restrictions of YouTube. I think it's like 10, 12 minutes or something like that. And then down to a D minor. And so we just make D, F, and A. Or actually, that's a D minor 7, so I'm going to add in a C. Now, I could add in the C right here below the D, or I could add it above. Like I said, you can have them in pretty much um, any inversion you want. And now here's C. So, usually when I write, I just kind of uh, disregard any of the inversions and just kind of write what's closest. And uh, so basically that's how it works. And I could go and I could write in the breast of those chords, but pretty much all I'm doing is just copying, pasting, and changing the notes. Um, right here, these chords that I've picked, I just wanted to mention this is the last note. These chords right here, B flat, A flat, and stuff, those are not um, the most uh, readily ab available chords on the guitar. You're going to end up using, uh, you know, uh, barred chords or something like that to access those. So... Um, we can actually go in. We have a few different um, ways of approaching this. We could go and listen to each chord and see if we like that voicing. voicing. If we don't, we can always use the mod wheel right here, controller number one. And they're basically, for each chord, you have three different versions. So for example, this A flat chord could be voiced like this. Or if I put in the mod wheel about that high, It'll use a different voicing, and then finally, here's the very highest voicing for that chord. So you have a few options there. In this case, I'm actually going to uh, try capoing the guitar or detuning it using this control in the preferences right here. And that way I can try to get it um, to sound as natural as possible. Um, guitar chords, guitar keys, excuse me, tend to be... E, A, D, G, and uh, those keys. Whereas um, keys like E flat, B flat, A flat, you're going to end up using barred chords, and it's not going to sound the same because you're not going to be able to use those low open strings. So, here's what happens when we detune it one, one um, uh, semitone. So now this B flat chord is going to be um, an A voicing. But it's still gonna be it's gonna still gonna sound as B flat. So let's hear how that sounds. You can hear that low E flat there. And compare that, here's the original. You can really hear it when it goes into the A flat right there, you can hear that change. 
Anyway, so detuning it a semitone, you know, so setting it to minus one, is probably the best setting in this particular guitar track, based on the keys and the different chords that I'm using. Um, but you pretty much just have to try a few different settings and hear how it sounds, and um, and that's how you judge how to set whether you want to detune the guitar or capo it. So anyway, I hope this tutorial was helpful, and um, that'll kind of give you a head start in using the uh, Rhythm Guitar Engine. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check back for more video tutorials.